Welcome SOLIDWORKS users to part two of our four part series where we are designing a Deadpool tool holder. No better place to hold our sharp tools than the regenerating degenerates head. In this part of the series we'll begin manipulating the bust, scaling it to the desired size and simplifying the top surfaces of the head a bit. Let's first sketch on the front plane and draw a construction line to measure the current height of the bust. I'm making the line coincident with the bottom plane of the part as well as this very top vertex. Now just click on the vertical line to pull up the line properties on the left. And here I'm going to right click and copy the line dimension. Then exit the sketch and navigate to Insert, Features, Scale. Let's scale this around the origin in all three X, Y, and Z directions. So keep the uniform scaling option on. And I'm going to make this 6 inches tall so we can enter the formula for SOLIDWORKS to calculate the scale value. The number 6 followed by a forward slash, which is the divide symbol, and I hit Control p to paste the number we just copied from the previous sketch. And hit the green check mark to scale the part. Now let's use a few surface tools to simplify the top of Deadpool's head. Remember, when we imported this mesh, SOLIDWORKS converted all of the facets into individual surfaces, so the top of the head is made up of hundreds of surfaces. I want to be able to reference the top of the head for some extrude operations later, so I'm going to replace these hundreds of surfaces with just two surfaces. Let's first sketch on the right plane and draw a solid line that extends past both sides of the head. And I'll dimension this to 0.75 inches below the top of the head. Exit the sketch, then navigate to Reference Geometry Plane. Select the line we just created, and we'll make this new reference plane perpendicular to the right plane. Now, under the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager, you'll find the Cut with Surface tool. Enter this tool. Select the plane we just created, and ensure the cut direction is set in the proper direction, which should be toward the area you want to cut away. Then click the green check mark to make the cut. Now let's convert this solid body to a surface body by deleting this top face. You'll find the Delete Face tool in the Surfaces tab. Here I'm simply selecting the top face, and I'll keep the Delete option selected, and hit OK. Now we can fill this top surface, which was once made up of hundreds of triangular surfaces, with a single tangent surface. Let's navigate to the Filled Surface tool, and before selecting any of the boundary edges to fill, I'm going to change the edge settings to Tangent, and make sure this applies to all selected edges. Then right-click on one of the open edges and click on Select Open Loop. This tool comes in handy big time in this case, as this loop is made up of hundreds of individual edges. But be patient, as this operation may take a little while to complete. Once all of the edges are selected, you may get this warning that the surface may not satisfy the tangency constraint you selected but click OK to attempt the surface creation anyways. In this case, it works just fine. Once you're happy with the previewed surface, click OK to create the surface. Now, this new surface created a slightly lopsided top to the head, so I'm going to split and mirror one half of the bust to perfect the shape. Let's select the right plane and navigate to Insert, Features, Split. Click the Cut Bodies button, and I'm going to select the right half of the bust to split. Just make sure the Consume Cut Bodies option is selected to discard it from the model and click OK. Now notice this is still an open surface body. So after we mirror this across the right plane, let's navigate to the Knit Surface tool found in the Surfaces tab of the Command Manager. Here I'm simply selecting both surfaces then select the Merge Entities and Create Solid Options, and click OK. We now have our model back to a solid, and the top of the head has been simplified to contain only two mirrored surfaces. Now let's wrap up Part 2 of the series by creating several reference planes, which we'll use to sketch from in the final two parts of the series. Sketching on the front plane, I'm just creating a bunch of construction lines. I'll create a horizontal line coincident with the top of the head, and then a few randomly angled lines, one on each side of the head.
Now, sketching on the right plane, let's draw in another construction line toward the front of the part, set with a 60 degree angle to the vertical line. Exit this second sketch and navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane. Select this angled line from our second sketch and make the resulting plane perpendicular to the right plane. Similarly, let's create three more reference planes from the lines we created in the first sketch. This time, I'm setting them perpendicular with the front plane. Okay, thus concludes part two of this series. In part three of the series, we'll start adding the holes in the top of Deadpool's head, designed to hold our various sharp tools. Stay tuned.